So if, like me, the events in Lebanon over the last few days have caught your attention, should we be concerned? Is it time to start thinking about throwing out our walkie-talkies and pages? So before we start throwing away our cheap Chinese Baofengs and Quanchengs, we probably don't need to be too concerned because obviously this was a planned coordinated attack. But for me this has thrown up a few more questions than it has answers. So let's first of all look at the pages. So allegedly the pager model that was used was the Gold Apollo AR924. And as we know the Hezbollah members had been told to get rid of their mobile phones because of security issues. And uh, they opted for using pagers, which I find a little bit strange because, uh, as we know, the pager system is not secure at all. It's an, it's an old system. Poxag is very easy to decode. It's been around for a number of years, and a simple scanner or uh, an SDR dongle con connected to a, an old PC of any type can decode the Poxag messages. It's very simple to be done. The only benefit to that, obviously, is that uh, a pager itself can't be traced, it's a receive only device, so there's no GPS, there's no transmission coming from that device at all, so you wouldn't know where the user was necessarily. So there's been a couple of videos come out recently, and I'll link in the description down below a playlist to those videos that I've watched. There's some great ones by uh, Ringway Manchester Lewis and AI Telly as well. The AI Telly one talks about potential uh, batteries being changed in the, uh, in the pages, but the page in question uses a single AAA uh, alkali battery, which is replaced by the user. On the back of the, uh, the page itself, there'll be a little um, opening and you can just replace the battery. The batteries on my page it lasts several weeks, so obviously they had these pages for about five months, so presumably they would have at some point had to change the uh, the AAA battery in the back there. So I'm not quite sure about the theory as to uh, batteries being tampered with and uh, being disguised as the explosive. I think it'd be more likely that something inside the circuitry has been changed, something on the PCB. I mean, maybe there was something that looks like a capacitor but was the explosive. I'm not an explosive expert at all, so I've no idea. But it was obviously definitely something changed inside that radio. But um, yeah radio inside that pager but uh, um, yeah whether it was to do with the uh, AAA battery or not I don't know and would the uh, AAA battery at 1.5 volts and very low ampage be enough to trigger that kind of explosive I guess it probably would be but again I'm not an expert so I've no idea so triggering a device with the pager would theoretically be quite simple uh, it depends how they set the pages up, but pages generally have uh, two addresses. So there might be a unique address, so that if you wanted to send a message to an individual's pager, a bit like a mobile phone number, uh, it'd have its own address, which you could send a, a message to just that one individual. They could also have a group message as well. So imagine the pager's got two mobile phone numbers or two SIM cards, that's basically how it works. One would be the single address and the other one would be a group address so presumably all of the pages in question had the same group address in and this was the first time a message was sent to those so like my pager which I use for work um, there's two group messages in there, two, two group ones one will use for testing and uh, it makes a different tone and then if I get called to a fire uh, there's a horrible noise comes out of that and uh, that's the one they generally tend to use so I could see how that could probably fairly simply be used to de detonate the device itself. Obviously your um, group one would then activate, uh, rather than a beep, it would activate the detonator as well. Presumably that as well as the beep, because reports were saying that the page is beeped, uh, people were picking them out of their pockets, and then a few seconds later they were, they were going off, which would, I guess would kind of make sense, because um, it's receiving the tone, it's acting as it normally should, and then the uh, detonator's heating up and then activating that small amount of explosive in there but with obviously deadly consequences. So moving on to the walkie-talkie incident then that happened the following day, we know that the radio model was likely to be the ICOM IC V82. ICOM made the V82 and the U82 identical radios, the V being the VHF version and the U being the UHF version and uh, they were manufactured between 2004 and 2014 so they've been out of, uh, out of manufacture certainly the ICOM factory for the last 10 years uh, so it's most likely that these were fake units there must have been a reason why uh, these were selected so uh, I've had a look at the instruction manual for these I've downloaded that and um, 
there was talk on, on, in the media about there being a little accessory compartment on these radios so I've looked into that and if we look on the instruction manual you'll see that there is um, a pager module available which is the UT108 so I'm sure that's absolutely no coincidence that they've used a, uh, a pager module uh, because presumably the, the, um, the process is exactly the same you just send out a group call um, to those radios and uh, that detonates the, uh, the bomb and obviously being a slightly larger unit than the pager you could have slightly more explosive in there again I'm not an expert so I don't know but um, that that does make sense to me uh, these operate slightly differently to the pagers these use DTMF codes or dual tone multi frequency codes which is the old style telephone tones and again just like the pager um, you'll, the radio itself will have an, its own individual tone and then a group code as well so presumably it was the group co code that has been used to detonate these all at once now I don't know whether this uses the same network or same frequency as the actual pager system because I'm, I'm assuming there must have been a, a national type of like pager uh, system which would have detonated all those at the same time that certainly would have made sense to me um, or either that or some sort of high powered VHF or UHF depending upon which radio is being used uh, transmitted to send out those uh, DTMF tones so again um, old technology being used in a way uh, quite simply to uh, detonate a, uh, an explosive so I can demonstrate how selective calling or group calls work using VHF marine radios all VHF marine radios around the world uh, these days will have DSC or digital selective calling which is cell call essentially and uh, every radio will have its own unique uh, code or MMSI or maritime mobile service identity uh, but also that could be open to uh, a similar uh, kind of attack I guess because uh, they could be programmed with a group number you don't have to have the group number met, um, stuck in there but if uh, if they had the group number then uh, you could detonate all the uh, radios at the same time so I'm going to demonstrate a uh, a group call on the VHF marine radio system using my training radios So there you go, that shows how easy it is to send a group call on the VHF marine radio system via DSC or digital selective calling. But is this something that should be of concern? Well, possibly, possibly not. I mean, imagine if you could sell a whole load of uh, radios to a navy that have got uh, a fleet of ships and uh, you've manipulated those radios to act in the way that these pages and uh, icon radios have behaved in then yeah definitely you could cause for concern it's uh, using old technology um, or it's ex exploiting old technology basically isn't it so uh, yeah definitely uh, something to be aware of anyway I hope you found this video interesting if you have please uh, like leave a comment let me know your thoughts and uh, if you feel obliged then uh, please hit the subscribe as well cheers